Bush bread, or seed cakes, refers to the bread made by Australian Aboriginals for many thousands of years, by crushing seeds into a dough, after which it is baked. The bread was high in protein and carbohydrate, and helped form part of a balanced traditional diet. With the arrival of Europeans and pre milled white flour, this bread making process all but disappeared, although women were still recorded to be making seed cakes in Central Australia in the 1970s. The tradition of cooking bread in hot coals continues today. Bread making was a woman's task. It was generally carried out by several women at once, due to its labor intensive nature. It involved collecting seasonal grains, legumes, roots or nuts, and preparing these into flour and then dough, or directly into a dough. <inaudible> bread making from seeds <inaudible> Collecting the seed Seeds varied depending on the time of year and the area in Australia that the people lived. In Central Australia, native millet Panicum decompositum, Panicum australiense and spinifex triodia were commonly used. Wattle seed could also be used in the flour mix. Women harvested the fully ripe, dry seeds of the plant by beating the grass or pod-laden trees in the case of wattle seed with sticks to dislodge the seeds. Some species were eaten at the green stage and, when ground, would produce a juice at the side of the millstone, which was drunk directly. Some seeds such as the seed of acacia need to be heated, hulled and then ground dry, while others such as those of grasses can be ground with water. In the Kimberley region of Western Australia, women observed that, after the dry season, many seeds would be gathered around the opening of harvester ants' nests. The ants had effectively collected and husked the seed for them, and they were able to collect this seed, making their job a lot easier. After allowing the grain to dry, they could begin to prepare the flour. <laughs> Some other seeds Pigwig Portulaca oleracea, prickly wattle Acacia victoriae, mulga Acacia annua, dead Finnish seed Acacia tetragonophylla, bush bean Rhincherina linearis. Topic: <laughs> Making the flour. After the grain was collected, it needed to be winnowed, which was done using the kulaman, the multipurpose carrying vessel. Sometimes it needed to be winnowed several times. Once the grain was winnowed, it was ground using a millstone, to create flour. Millstones have been discovered which have proven to be as old as 50,000 years. The flour was then mixed with water to make a dough and placed in hot ashes for baking. The results could be small buns, today referred to as Johnny Cakes, or a large loaf, known today as damper. Damper appears to be a mix of this traditional style of bread making and European style bread making. The dough could also be eaten raw. Cooking was a good way to prepare the bread if the group was about to travel for some time. <inaudible> bread making from other plant products Bread could also be made from roots and corms of plants. In the top end of Australia, people such as the Yolngu used the lotus root and wild taro. These were ground, then mixed to a paste to make bread. Water lily seed bread was also popular in the top end. The two species of water lily used were Nalumba nucifera and Nymphaea macrosperma. During the early part of the dry season, water lilies were an important part of the diet, with seed pods eaten raw or ground into paste. Women had expert knowledge of how to detoxify certain plant foods. The seeds of the cycad palm, cycas media, are highly carcinogenic when raw, and require elaborate treatment including shelling, crushing, leaching in running water for up to five days, then cooking. After this they are made into small loaves, which can keep for a number of weeks. In Queensland, the people of the Mount Tambourine area used the bunya pine cone bunya nut, endemic to the area, to make bread in this way. Burke and Wills Ill-fated explorers Burke and Wills survived on bush bread for some time after they ran out of rations due to the death of their camels. The Cooper Creek Aboriginals, the Yandrawanda people, gave them fish, beans called padlu, and bread made from the ground sporocarps of the nardu plant Marsalia drummondi. 
There is some evidence that the Nardu contributed to their deaths. Wills's last journal entry includes the following Starvation on Nardu is by no means very unpleasant, but for the weakness one feels, and the utter inability to move oneself, for as far as appetite is concerned, it gives me the greatest satisfaction. Certainly, fat and sugar would be more to one's taste, in fact, those seem to me to be the great stand-by for one in this extraordinary continent, not that I mean to depreciate the farinaceous food, but the want of sugar and fat in all substances obtainable here is so great that they become almost valueless to us as articles of food, without the addition of something else, it is possible that the explorers, in preparing the bread themselves, were not preparing it in the traditional way of the aboriginal people, which may have involved soaking seeds prior to grinding in order to remove the enzyme thiaminase, which depletes the body of vitamin B1. It is therefore believed that the deaths of Burke and Wills resulted in part from the vitamin deficiency disease beriberi. However, other research suggests that scurvy vitamin C deficiency and environmental factors also contributed to their deaths. <laughs> 